Hi, and welcome back. Today, I'm going to show you how to install Stable Diffusion through the automatic 11.11 user interface. Now, once we're all done and you have any questions, I highly recommend you going to the Stable Diffusion Discord channel, which I'll have the, uh, the address here on the screen. And if you have any questions, go there. There's lots of great people to help you out with all the various settings because Stable Diffusion is very complex in how it operates. But I'm going to get you up and running here in a very short period of time. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to open up your web browser and you want to go to python.org slash release slash er, slash python dash 3109. Now what this will do is it'll bring you to this screen here and it will allow you to download Python version 3.10.9. There is a newer version as of the recording of this, but that is known to be a little bit unstable with uh, Python or with uh, Stable Diffusion. So I would recommend downloading this version 3.10.9 because it is known to work much better. Now, don't worry about the links here. I will have them all in the description or in the first pinned comment so, along with step-by-step -step instructions. So it'll be easy to follow this going forward. Once you're here at this website, you scroll all the way down here to the bottom and you want to go to Windows Installer 64-bit. You click on that and that will download the file to your computer. Now I've already got this installed on my computer so I'm not going to bother doing it again, but you just click on that and then once it's downloaded, you run that file and do the install. Now you don't need to change any settings. You don't need to uh, do anything other than click on next, 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 finish and let it do its thing. It's very fast, it'll get installed very quickly. So once you've downloaded and installed Python, the next thing you need to do is you need to download Git for Windows. And the way you do that is by going to gitforwindows.org. Again, I'll have all the links down below and you click on the download button. Click on that. That will download a file to your computer. Again, I've already got it downloaded myself, so I'm not gonna go through that again, but basically, just like before, you download the file, you run it. There are a bunch of windows in the install screen. All you need to do is just click on next until you hit finish. The defaults are all fine for what we're going to be using it for. When you're done with it, uh, when, when you're done with the install, there will be an option there to uh, view the release notes. I would recommend unchecking that. Uh, though you can, you know, if you want to see what the latest release notes are, you're more than welcome to check that out. Once you've finished downloading and installing Git for Windows, the next step is to go to GitHub and you're going to go to github.com slash automatic 1111 slash stable dash diffusion dash web UI. And when you get to this page, you're going to scroll down until you see automatic installation on Windows. And what you're going to do is you're going to highlight this on step three here. You're going to highlight this text that is in gray, which says starts with the word git, G-I-T, and ends with the word dot git. Now, you're not going to copy the period at the end, but just everything that's in gray there. And you're going to copy that by hitting control C. So once you copy that text, you're then going to go to your search bar and you're going to type in CMD and you're going to open up the command prompt. And then you're going to, it's going to default to this, your C drive or your user's directory slash your user, in my case, dad, because that's who I am. <laughs> and then you're going to paste that line of text right there at the end of that line. And you're going to hit enter. Now for me, it says that the directory already exists, but what's going to happen is it's going to download a bunch of files for you. And it's going to put them in your user directory in a folder called stable diffusion dash web UI. 
So once you've downloaded everything and it's in here, you can go ahead and close that command window because you're not going to need it anymore. And then the next thing that you want to do is you want to download the latest version of Stable Diffusion. And what you're going to do is when you download that, it's going to go into the models slash stable diffusion directory. I already have a bunch of files here, but it's going to go into this directory. So what you want to do is go to huggingface.co slash runway ml slash stable dash diffusion dash v1 dash five slash tree slash main. Now, again, I'm going to have all the links down in the description or the first pinned comment so you can go through these steps very, very easily. And when you're there, it, the first thing it's going to do is if you don't have an account, it's going to ask you to set up a free user account. It's free. It's easy to set up. No, you know, very simple and quick and easy to do. The next thing you want to do or next thing it'll make you do is it'll make you agree to two different user agreements and they'll be on the page right here somewhere in the middle here. You just click on the links, agree to them. Then you can finally download Staple Diffusion 1.5. So once you've entered everything here, you then go to the Files and Versions tab. And the file that you're going to look for is called v1-5-pruned-emaonly.ckpt. And you're going to click on this little down arrow, and you're going to download that file and you're gonna download it into the directory that we talked about earlier. That's gonna be your users slash your username, in my case, dad, slash stable dash diffusion dash web UI slash models slash stable dash diffusion. And you're going to put that model into this directory. Easy and straightforward. One of the things it wants you to do sometimes is rename that uh, file but I'd recommend keeping the file name just as it is so you know exactly which models you're using later on. It may not make sense now, but trust me, later on down the road when you have 20 or 30 different models in Stable Diffusion that you're switching between, you'll want to know exactly which ones you're using. All right, again, since I already have it downloaded, I'm not going to go through that part of it, but I just, you know, once you've got that downloaded, then the next step is to open up your file, file explorer and you want to go to your stable-diffusion-webui directory. Again, that's going to be under your users folder, your username, and then the stable-diffusion-webui directory. And you're going to want to scroll down until you see webui-user.bat file. Click on one so it's highlighted, then right-click on it and go to edit. Now, the first line to pay attention to here is set Python equals. Now, on yours, it's going to look like this. There's going to be just this line with nothing after it. So what you want to do is you want to put in the path to your Python executable file that you downloaded earlier. And the way that you do that is you Go again to your Windows search here. You type in Python, and then you will see this application here, Python 3.1064 bit. Right click on that and go to open file location. Now, this is the location of the shortcut. You don't want that. What you want to do is click, right click on the shortcut that is highlighted, and again, go to open file location and that will bring you to the real location of this particular file. What you want to do then is right click up here in the in the address bar and say copy address as text. That's important. Copy address as text. And then you're going to go back to your BAT file and you can go to the end of this line here where it says set Python equals. And you're going to paste in there by going control V the path to the file. Now it's not done yet. What you want to do is you want to put in another slash 
and then type in the word python.exe. And then to finish it off, you want to put a quote at the beginning of that path, right before the drive letter, and a quote at the end of that path, right after it says python.exe. And then one more thing to do right before you close this is down here between the set command line args and the call web UI dot bat, there's going to be an empty line there. You want to type in here, git git space pull, P-U-L-L. What that does is every time you start the uh, web UI, it's going to go to GitHub and grab the latest version of automatic 11.11, just so you have everything up to date. Once you're done with that, you then save this file and close it. Now, this is the next step. We're getting, we're almost done, almost done. So what you wanna do next is go back to, we're, we're gonna close this one temporarily. We're gonna go back to our stable-diffusion-web UI folder, and we're going to double click on the web UI-user.bat. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up this command window. And the first time you run this, it's going to download a bunch of files. And it can take a while to do that. So please be patient. And as you can see here, sometimes it will look like it's doing absolutely nothing. It is doing stuff in the background. You just need to give it time. The first time I ran through this, it took me about 15 minutes for it to go through and download all the files and do everything it needs to do. Once it's done downloading all the files, it will come up with a prompt here in a moment. Okay, so once it's done downloading everything, it will finish with this line here that says, running on local URL, http colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 slash 7860. Of course, yours may be slightly different but it should be something very similar to this. So what you're gonna do is you're going to highlight this line here and you're gonna copy it by pressing Control C. Now, once one thing you do not want to do is you do not want to close this window because if you close this window, Stable Diffusion will not run. So once you've copied that URL, you go back to your web browser and you paste in that URL. And here is your stable is your uh, automatic eleven and eleven stable diffusion user interface. We're almost done. So here's what we're gonna do. The very first line here, where it says stable diffusion checkpoint, you want to make sure that you have that file down that we downloaded earlier selected. That's the v one dash five dash pruned dash EMA only dot CKPT. You want to make sure you have that selected. Now, when you change your models up here, sometimes it will have to download new files. So you want to look at your command model, command screen here, and you want to make sure that it gets its stuff done before you go on to the next step. So it only take a few seconds. And you want to then create your first image. In this case, we're going to type in the word dog. And then once you have your prompts here, we're going to click on generate. And then it's going to take a few moments. On my machine, it takes a few seconds. On yours, it may take a little bit longer depending on the power of your particular machine. And as you can see here, we have our first dog picture. Yay! <laughs> Time for a happy dance because you now have stable diffusion up and running. So just to give you a couple of quick things to go over on this, this first box that's up here, this is where you put your positive prompts. This is where you put things that you want to see in the image. This box that's underneath it is for negative prompts. Those are things that you don't want to see in the image. So once you have this, you can then, as I say, 
click on generate. Let's say you want the dog and you want a, a full body. And then you want it centered on the screen, right? Very simple command. Click on generate. It does its thing and it gives you a picture of a dog in the center of your screen, the full body. So the next thing you want to, to try is if you get an image that you like and you want to upscale that image, you then click on the button that's over down here in the lower right called send to extras. You may not be able to see that due to my body being in the way, but it's there. Click on send to extras. And what you want to do is then click on one of the upscalers that's here. The one that I typically recommend is this one that's called ESRGAN underscore 4X. What that does is it increases the size of the image by four times. So once you have that done, you click on generate, it does its thing, and you now have an image that's four times size. You can click on it once, kind of give you a, a good idea of it, but if you click on it a second time, it opens it up in full screen so you can see your doggo in all his glory even with all five of his legs. Now, there are ways to make these better and we'll get into those in later discussions on prompts and how to get really great images out of stable diffusion. But that was it for this tutorial. Do yourself a final happy dance because you now have everything installed. You now have all the basic knowledge you need to create images in stable diffusion. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really enjoyed bringing it to you, and I hope that you have a fantastic day. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.